I want to start in Proverbs 31, 11, verse 11 through 12. And, you know, I love what it says. It says, her husband trusts her without reserve and has never and never has a reason to regret it. Never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. Mm. So, you know, marriage. Let's talk about marriage in the Proverbs 31 filter. And I know there's a lot of women that are watching this that you maybe aren't married or you're a widow or maybe you just never have been married. And I, I want to talk for a few minutes about what it looks like to be a godly woman and what I believe that this author is giving us context for, which is trust in relationship. Mm. Now, I got married at 27 and I was, I was single and ready to mingle. Like I had been praying for my husband for a long time. And I mean, I was a little girl. My parents would pray for my husband. And so by the time I hit 27, it felt like I was 47 and had been praying for my <laughs> husband. And then I met my husband. He's four years younger than I am. And I did not think I would marry him at all. In fact, when I first like started kind of having feelings, I kept thinking, this is so weird. I don't like him. He's not going to be my husband. <laughs> and yet he kept winning me over by his kindness and his love for God. And when we got married, I just thought, a few things. I grew up in an all-girl home. Basically, I have a mom and I have a twin sister and I have an Italian dad. And so we lived a very female life. And then I, I got married to a man. I never had a brother. I didn't have a very, that kind of dad. And, and I remember thinking two thoughts. And one was, the Bible said the two shall become one. And I assumed it would be me. I felt like I was the better choice of the two becoming one. Clearly, I would be that best choice. And then I also, I remember thinking that I was just marrying a male version of my best friend. Like, we are going to just be best friends, and we're going to mm -hmm. walk the mall together, and we're, he's going to, like, carry the shoes for me. And I remember early on in our marriage, he looked at me and was like, I'm not doing any of that with you. And I'm like, well, why not? He's like, because I'm not your girlfriend. I don't want to do that with you. And I remember being so offended, like, you don't think I'm fun? And why wouldn't it be fun to go to the makeup counter and pick out lipstick? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> And he's like, well, I'm not going to actually want to sleep with you if you make me do that. So <laughs> we started really going through this process of me learning what it looked like to care for my husband. And so I started to realize that he was different than I was. And part of me becoming a godly wife to him was not changing who I was, but it was, it was being willing to bring the best of me into the marriage. And the best of me meant that I was going to show up in the, the kindest way possible, the most gracious way possible, and that I was going to care for him in a way that I would want to be cared for. And so as I started getting married, and I, I promise I'm bringing this all in together, I remember I would hang out with all these girls, and there's this kind of cultural thing that I think women can do, which is let's get together and bash our husbands. Like, let's get together and talk about what underwear did it make it in the hamper and, you know, how many times I asked to do this or whatever. And, and so I remember as a young wife, I would get in these environments and people would begin to talk and I wanting to fit in and finally feeling like I had an outlet, I'd begin to talk about my husband and this and that. And I mean, of course I was thinking there's a lot more I could share. I'm not going to share it all, but there was a few things. And one day my husband and I were hanging out and he had come back from hanging out with some friends. And he said, um, did you share the specific thing that I had shared with you that was cl something close to my heart with these people, these girls? And I went, oh, well, yeah, of course. You know, I didn't think it was a big deal. And I remember the look on his face. Like I had betrayed this relationship by wanting to share and get something off my heart and be included and yet completely dishonoring him. And I remember at that moment, I made a decision that I was never going to talk about my husband like that mm -hmm. again, and that our intimate life would be intimate, and that our friendship would be above all. We, I would treat him like my best friend, and I would guard him, and I would protect him, because that's how I wanted to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I look at Proverbs 31, and it says, you know, it's this man that he looks at her, and he's like, I can trust you with the things in my yeah. heart. Yeah. And you know, that's not just a married thing. If you look at Mary in the Bible, when Jesus, when the, when the Spirit came to Mary, and he, they said when He told Mary those things, it says she hid it in her heart. So this is an attribute of a godly woman. This is an attribute of a wife. This is an attribute of a woman that hears 
valuable, precious things from people's hearts and lives. Mm -hmm. And we hide it in our hearts, not for the sake of using as ammunition to get people to do or to make sure that we have something to get somebody. Mm -hmm. But part of being a godly person and a a virtuous woman is we're going to hear a lot of things we can never repeat. Can I just hear an amen? Like there are things Mm -hmm. people share with us that we, it would be a great story. It'd be funny. It would be worth it. But in the long run, we would break trust and they would never have that same respect for us or us for them. So what I really want to talk about today is the idea that Part of us working out our relationships is trust. And part of my relationship with my husband is trust. And so there are things, even in my relationship with God, that he shares with me that I don't share with everybody else. Why? Because I'm, it's a trust relationship and it's a respect. And so I just feel like in this generation where there is nothing sacred, mm-hmm. like nothing sacred, I think what this Proverbs is really talking about is that there are going to be things that we hear and learn and know that have a place of a a sacred place to hold in our hearts and to let them play out and not to be the one that shares it with everybody. And think about Mary. Mm -hmm. She was like, I'm I'm going to give birth to the Savior. You wait. Like everyone be like, that is not the story that we want to hear. There was something about Mary knowing about timing, Mm -hmm. knowing about trust, knowing about that she could be trusted Mm -hmm. with this unbelievable miracle of the world. She was so carrying the savior of the universe mm-hmm. and she's hiding it. She's keeping it. Right. She's she's protecting it. And I just think in my own heart and I think in the hearts of a lot of people watching, we don't often make space for sacred things. And I think that's what Proverbs 31 is talking about. You know, there's a lot of, I think, confusion about marriage these days. And I just want to take a minute be for those of us that are married, I want, I really believe marriage isn't difficult when you're set out to serve the other person. I don't mean that they're perfect. I don't mean that they've done it all right. But when I wake up every day to make my husband's life better and that he's grateful he married me out of all the women in the world he could have married, he picked me. If I set out to do that, life gets Mm -hmm. so much easier. It's uncomplicated. But when I try to, and it's the same thing, when I try to use the story to create my, my value, my existence, my perfect picture, then all of a sudden he's a character in the story. He's no longer a person Mm -hmm. and a man. He's, he's playing a role. And that's what you're saying, Lisa, about friendships. I think Diana's saying it very well. All of a sudden, these are now characters in our story that we're creating a story rather than going, you know, wait a minute. My job is to protect them whether anybody ever knows this part. It's not the point. The point is, I, I want to be somebody that when they leave my presence, they know so they're never going to be, this is never going to be right. used right. against them. And I'll tell you what, there are stories out there of me that I would hate someone to know. Not that I somehow in, in, you know, voluntarily tried to do something to get away with it, but we've all had moments that we're oh like, Jesus, gracious. I don't want to see the replay videos in heaven. I hope that that gets erased yeah. because my life is more than a moment. I have a lifestyle. And so I really think it's important. And I I just want to challenge as a younger girls that are watching this. I know, I I mean, I've shared things with Lisa about my inner life and I know it's not going to go anywhere. I'm very confident of that. But there there is a balance on all of this. There's a sacredness from socializing and from connecting and from stories. There's a sacredness with your relationship with Christ that's going to be very important. There's going to be secrets he's going to share with you about your future that you cannot tell. Tell a bunch of people. You cannot put it in an Instagram post and let God, okay, God, you spoke this word to me yesterday, and so now it's going to be out there as a book. You you need it to marinate. It's the reason why God gives us a baby, and we have nine months to protect it, to care for it, to get to know it. It's the same with God in our relationship. So for some of us, the reason we keep having kind of these stillborn spiritual experiences because we're not really actually allowing it to grow in the safety of our hearts and in the safety of our relationships so when it's time, it'll be full grown. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.